everyone. In this video, we are going to deepen our knowledge about nonlinear system identification and we will use the so-called neural ordinary differential equations or so-called nodes. The use case of the nodes is that, again, we want to model a potentially nonlinear ODE and in contrast to our previous videos where we did parameter identification, so where we have used structural knowledge on the system, we are now going to assume that we exactly lack this pre-knowledge. So we say that we have no knowledge of the system structure. Lack of knowledge with respect to structure. So if we do not have specific insights like how this right-hand side of the ODE is internally structured, of course we normally also do not have the opportunity to model physical or interpretable parameters within this right-hand side. So we need not only to find some parameters describing the right-hand side, but we also need to find the actual structure to represent the right-hand side. And one way in order to do this is the so-called node approach. So what is the idea? The idea is quite straightforward. Um, instead of putting something in terms of parameters on the right-hand side which are physical and interpretable, we take an artificial neural network, so an ANN, with the inputs of x of t and u of t, so s here the right-hand side of the ODE, and the output of this ANN is then fed into an ODE representation plus ODE solver. So that would be basically this entire structure plus one of the solvers which we have already discussed wrapping around that. And this output here of the ODE will be F hat, so an approximation of this right-hand side, with some abstract or potentially abstract parameters w, depending on x and u, and this will be x dot, right? So representation of the right-hand side. And if our ODE solver solves this approximate right-hand side, what we of course get from that is x hat of t, so our representation of the time-based solution, and if we want to utilize that for simulation, we of course need to feed that back here into the input in order to have, let's say, a closed looped simulation, which we can utilize in order to solve the right-hand side. And this combination of A and N, so an abstract representation of the right-hand side, plus the ODE solver is called the node approach, right? So formally, this is just another optimization problem in terms of machine learning. So what we're going to do here is we want to minimize with respect to the parameters W, representing this approximate right-hand side of our neural ODE of a very classical loss function, which we consider the sum of k equals 1 up to n sampling points of x of k, which is some sample ground truth data, minus x hat of k in the MSE kind of way, which is the output here of this right-hand side using the node approach. And this needs to be solved with subject to x hat dot is f w hat x of hat and u, and we do this on a time base, t k is equal to k times delta t being some time steps on which we actually evaluate this cost function. So pretty much just another potentially nonlinear optimization problem as we have already discussed that the big new element of this approach is now that we do not assume any pre-knowledge about the right-hand side and we represent it by a general ANN.
So let's get some um, intuition by that by a practical implementation example. In this practical implementation example, we actually start with a very simple linear ODE as ground truth data, the Newton's cooling law, which basically means that we just need to uh, put in um, some uh, temperature, ambient temperature, and we are modeling the temperature X of T of some solid metal, for example, being in an ambient airflow. So very simple ground truth problem and of course in the following we do assume that we do not have let's say knowledge about the structure of the right hand side so we do not know that the right hand side is such simple. We just utilize it in order to get some ground truth data x of k first and then we use the node approach trying to optimize it. So uh, what do we do? We start with setting up the ODE uh, in the uh, function Newton's cooling uh, very classically. Then we set up some general simulation parameters, put everything into uh, an ODE solver using uh, the differential EQ package from Julia. And the ground truth um, system response is as follows. So we assume that our metal element, which is sitting in just air, is heating up to 200 degrees Celsius and we assume that the ambient temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. So what we see including some measurement noise, is this first order decay of the um, temperature of this body, which is then uh, approximately converging to the ambient temperature, which is to be expected given the uh, Newton's cooling law. Okay, so this is our ground truth data. We know this uh, greenish uh, data trajectory, and now we are going to apply the node approach. So what do we need for that? So first of all, uh, we of course need some right-hand side and this right-hand side in this, let's say, first attempt will be an artificial neural network using the LAX package of Julia with two inputs. Why do we need two inputs? We need one for X of T, which is a scalar, and U of T, uh, which is our ambient temperature, which is another scalar. And we just do like a very simple, more or less randomly picked neural network here with one hidden layer, not too big, and the output layer, which is a scalar. So this one here is basically the output dimension. And of course, the ODE is a scalar ODE, so our output is just of dimension one. Okay, so very simple neural network, nothing fancy here, uh, more or less randomly picked. Then we need to configure the simulation of the ODE solver of the node approach. So we basically need to uh, configure this right-hand side solver for the node training, which we do here on the uh, part of the code. And we do everything in single precision, so float32, in order to be compliant with the lux.jl package in order, in order to give, uh, have also a speedy simulation. Then we put everything into the uh, um, solver. Um, so we put here the A and N as the right-hand side of dx dt, right? So this is basically our ODE problem, and we do not assume any further pre-knowledge. Then we have our ODE problem, and for this ODE problem, of course, we now need to define a cost function. For this cost function, we have a predict function, which is just basically the uh, solve call of the ODE problem and here's our squared loss as already indicated here on the right hand side for this Newton's cooling problem with theta A, the ambient temperature, being a constant input uh, on the right hand side. Then here's the loss function, straightforward, just the MSE loss targets mi uh, minus predicted values, predicted is here x hat and the target is x including measurement noise. If we then uh, want to optimize that using the optimization.jl package and with Zygote as the underlying algorithmic differentiation toolbox, uh, and we start actually trying to get a solution with the BFJS solver, then you can see with this try-catch uh, approach that actually the optimization fails, we get an error. And that might be like a little bit confusing because this method looks like so straightforward and if we now try to solve for the right hand side parameters we get an issue. What is the root cause of that issue? The root cause of that issue is that this package of A and N ODE plus solver of course needs to be well defined. And especially if you consider 
the stability question, either in terms of the dynamics of the right-hand side or of the numerical point of view of this right-hand side using ODE solvers, if this right-hand side is instable due to the actual dynamics or due to the numerics represented by an A and N, then of course this simulation loop crashes because the ODE solver tries to put out very, very large numbers which are numerically infeasible and therefore if the underlying ODE solver loop crashes, of course any optimization loop which tries to find the best possible parameters W will also fail and that is actually what is ha happening here. We can also visualize that by utilizing not the uh, BFGS solver but the ADAM solver which is a little bit more conservative, so which does not completely crash this optimization and simulation loop, but from the found result uh, using the ADAM solver, we can already see that the node approach in this application is not successful, because if you're looking here at the temperatures 10 to the power of minus 11, you can basically see that this right-hand side represented by an artificial neural network went numerically instable, and therefore this entire loop is not feasible. Okay, so what have we learned so far? We have learned that um, the node approach seems to be appealing because we do not need to apply eventually any pre-knowledge, but it can be also nasty in that thing that this simulation loop needs to be stable. What can we do in our example with Newton's cooling in order to stabilize it? Uh, I have prepared two remedies in order to do so. The first remedy is quite simple. Um, we are going to just uh, modify our right-hand side by adding activation functions. In particular, we are using the 10H activation function here at the input layer, at the hidden layer, and specifically at the output layer. So that basically means that uh, F hat will be limited to minus one and plus one. So that already limits basically the output of the right-hand side uh, A and N, and therefore this entire ODE loop gets stabilized in terms of the numerics. With this uh, modified A and N, uh, we are basically just going through the same optimization loop as before. So we modify uh, our ODE problem. So we take this new A and N in a new ODE problem and we put it again into our solver, or ODE solver, then we put it into our loss function, we optimize it using again the BFGS solver, which completely crashed on the first attempt, and then we look at the results after solving it. And what we can see from this figure is now that eventually, if we're looking on the y-axis, the solution was successful, so if you also read out the uh, solution printer of the optimization loop, you would see that it's actually converging into an optimum. However, um, due to our um, activation function, of course we have also limited the right-hand side of the ODE. As I said, it is limited due to the 10H between minus one and plus one. And if you consider that the right-hand side of this ODE can be just between minus one and plus one, that of course also means that we have reduced or constrained the slope of x dot. And that is exactly what we can see here because this decline, this blue line, is basically just a decline with a slope of minus one because our activation function here uh, of course limited the right-hand side output, which is good in terms of the numerical stability, but it also basically limits the dynamics which I can represent by the right-hand side of this A and N. Okay, so this first remedy at least stabilized the optimization and simulation loop, which is good, but obviously we can see that the result is still not decent because we have this huge systematic error. So we need another remedy. What can we do there? Um, of course, here we utilize an ANN based on physical data, so we see here temperatures between 100 and 200 degrees Celsius, and uh, we have this 10H function um, in terms of the output, which is of course limiting the dynamics. So what we can actually do is we can try to standardize the ground truth data and the input data, and then utilize um, the ANN approach and the node context into a latent space of standardized inputs and outputs, and then transform the ODE output later on. So that's the second remedy I would like to 
uh, showcase uh, to you the, perf uh, the um, performing standardization. For that, we are using the stats base um, package of Julia, which basically uses a transformation command uh, applying the normal Z-transform, Z-score transform, which is standardization by subtracting the mean and divi um, dividing by the a standard deviation of a signal, here in particular the ground truth signal and the ambient temperature. With that, we utilize the same ANN structure, so we don't change something structurally on the right-hand side or the proxy of our right-hand side. The only new difference what we do now is basically that we uh, perform uh, a solution based on the standardized ground truth data and inputs. So we just change the data representation, same structure of the node. So with these new data structures, uh, we go again through the prediction, through the loss node, through the optimization loop, and eventually we will plot the result after re, uh, of course, transforming the standardized data into the normal uh, temperature and time space. And what we can see here is that the result already improved, right? So we have, uh, the blue node response is somehow yeah, not similar, not ideal, but it goes into the right direction of representing the uh, Newton's cooling dynamics. So that already helped. So at that point of time, we could now increase, let's say, more remedies, more tricks, maybe also some pre-knowledge about the right-hand side in order to structure the ANN in more details. But what I wanted to show here with this notebook and with this example is that although the neural ODE approach seems so appealing because we just need to plug in like an ANN, an ODE solver and an optimization um, tool chain, which are basically ingredients which we have already discussed a lot, that this is not as simple as it looks like in the first instance. So we really have to make up our mind how to structure this ANN how to put it onto the right-hand side of the ODE and then how to solve everything. So that basically means we cannot start without making up some uh, ideas, some um, well-chosen ANN structures in order to get that right. And in the following videos, I will present a couple of examples and use cases how we can try to combine a limited pre-knowledge about systems such that we can structure this right-hand side of the node approach in such a way that we get a decent results, better results than here in this uh, Newton schooling approach, without the need of having full insights into the system structure. So basically, uh, a gray box model, which takes into account some black box elements like an ANN, an A &N, but also some limited pre-knowledge about the structure. And I would uh, be happy to see you in the next videos and thank you for watching this video.